What is going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMP, IA, and part 147 instructor. Back again with another video. And this time I'm gonna be doing a very requested video, which is sheet metal repairs. Now this is part of my practical project series where I'm going over some of the practical projects you might get as an AMP student testing for your oral and practical. If you're a pilot or if you're just interested in this kind of thing, it may help, but understand this project in particular is really just focused on getting you past the ONP and the process would look a little bit different if you were doing something like this to a certified airplane. Uh, now I will get into it in just a second, but here is my piece. I've already laid it out in the interest of time. Uh, it's very tedious to lay this out, but I'm gonna explain to you how I laid it out, how I would drill it, and what my overall plan would be. So if that interests you, stick around. I am currently dealing with a broken tripod, so I do apologize if the camera seems to be at a weird angle. It's really hard to get it to line up. The little angle thing broke. It doesn't matter. Um, here is my pieces. Now, I talked to a couple of different DMEs and asked and what they do for this project, and what a, a couple of them all said that they do the same thing. They will present you a four-inch plate with a crack right in the middle of it, a small like two inch crack for example, and then we'll tell you to cut that crack out and make a two inch square patch in the middle. So I have laid out the repair for a two inch square patch in the middle. Now this is actually supposed to be a flush patch. So this is the flush piece. This is the doubler that would go on the inside. So you would cut out all the damage. You would cut out a two inch square for the damage. The doubler would go in on the back and then the flush piece would go in on the front and all you would see from the aircraft side is one nice continuous seam. Now, for a DME and for your oral and practical test, you are going to be able to use the 4313-1B. If you are uh, working on an airplane where I said it'll get a little bit more complicated, depending on what you're doing, you might have to use a structural repair manual if you're doing something like a spar, which is gonna need a 337 anyways, but you're gonna have to use the aircraft's repair manual and it might very well tell you to use 4313-1B. I know a lot of the older airplanes, the older Pipers and Cessnas, they do that. Um, so just understand that. But for this, I'm using 4313-1B and all of the values that I'm about to mention are from 4313-1B. So the first thing I need to figure out is what size rivets I am going to need for this piece. Now, 4313 tells me that the rivets should be three times the thickness of the smallest piece or the thinnest piece. So if your thinnest piece is 025, you use that. If your thinnest piece is 032, you use that. And this is 032, so 0 0.032 um, aluminum, 2024 T3 in this example. And I did the math, I did 032, I times it by three, I get like 0 0.09, and that will come out to a 330 seconds rivet. So now that I have the size of my rivets that I'm gonna use for my repair, a 330 seconds, I can begin to lay out the repair. Now, I could also use a four, I could get away with using a four on this, so a 430 seconds rivet, for, but for the sake of this repair, I used a three. Now, a four, everything's gonna be even numbers and be a little bit easier to deal with, so if you use a four, no big deal, as long as you can justify that to the, uh, the DME or the FAA when they ask you why you used four. So 330 seconds rivets. Now my edge distance, my edge distance is gonna be my first crucial number. And my edge distance is how far my rivets are in from the edge of the piece. If the edge distance is too small, then the aluminum will warp out around the rivet heads. If the edge distance is too big, you're gonna have a big flap of aluminum hanging there and we don't want that. So edge distance should be 2D to 4D. So with a 330 seconds rivets, minimum 2D would come out to about 3 16 and a maximum would be 3 8 So for the sake of this demonstration, I did the little one at the minimum of 2D, and I did the bigger piece at the maximum of 4D, just to show you what that would look like. So this edge distance here from this edge to this line right here is 3 8 and from this line to this line is 3 8 This smaller piece right here, my edge distance from the edge of the plate to here is about 3 16 And I got this side a little crooked, but we're not gonna worry about that. So what I would do is I would lay out exactly like I did and draw these edge distance lines first. I'm gonna draw all my edge distance lines and put a rivet on each corner or mark a rivet on each corner. Then I will do the same. I will put the scab in here. I will trace out the scab and I will draw an edge distance line here and then a second edge distance line here. So this total length of this flap 
should be about six eighths or three quarters of an inch. If I used fours in this, it would end up being the full one inch border that I have. This is three quarter, it would end up being the full one inch border. Again, it doesn't matter. So now that I have my edge distances and I've placed a rivet in each corner of both the scab and the doubler that's going inside, I would then calculate my pitch. Now, if I'm gonna use a single row, pitch is gonna be 3D to 12D. So 3D for a 3.30 seconds, rivet would be 9.30 seconds, and 12D would be one inch and an eighth. And I'm not that smart, I just have all this written down because I did it over in the sheet metal lab. But, besides the point. So now that I have my pitch figured out, I can use a rivet fan or a divider, whatever works best for you, and start laying out the rivets. You can place one every 9 30 seconds of an inch, or you can place one every inch and an eighth. What I like to do is take a rivet fan, so that's one of those things that goes like this, I'll see if I can put a picture of it, and I put a hole on one corner and on the other corner, and then I measure it with just one rivet in there, and if it falls within an inch and an eighth, I use that. I like to use the maximum for everything because it's the it's the least amount of rivets installed. You could always go smaller, so I could have two rivets here instead of just one, but I like just having one. Like I said, I use the maximum. But I laid that out with the rivet fan, and I marked this rivet right here. And then what I'm going to do after I mark that rivet there, well actually before I even mark that rivet there, I take the rivet fan, I lay it out, and I have one hole here, one hole here, and one hole in the middle middle and I take my ruler and I put my ruler over there and I make sure that this hole is less than an inth less than an inch and an eighth and more than 930 seconds. So I did that here, here, here and here. So now this little scab piece is nice and laid out and perfect exactly the way I want it. So I can take it away and I can do the same thing to the flush doubler that's going to go inside. So again, one rivet at each corner. I take the fan out. I lay it with just one rivet here. It was past an inch and an eighth. It was almost at an inch and a half. So I have to use two rivets. So I shrink the rivet fan until I have a hole here, two holes, and a hole here. Again, I measure it with the ruler and measuring it. I hope you can see all this. Measuring it with a ruler, it fell up underneath an inch and an eighth and over 930 seconds. So with this piece in here, I like the way that looks. One rivet here, one rivet here, two in between, one rivet here, one rivet here, with one in between. And this is actually a repair that I would probably do on a certified aircraft. I like the way this looks. It's neat. There's not too many rivets in it. That's probably my biggest complaint as a uh, aircraft mechanic in an IA when I'm doing annuals and I see uh, flush patches and they've got like a rivet here, 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 here. And all of the rivets are way too close together. There's no pitch. It's just overshot. They're, some of them are on top of each other. It's ridiculous. Or they do a, a, a really small patch in like some O25 on just some on some skin. They're doing some O25, but for whatever reason, they shot a whole bunch of rivets in it that are maybe within the limit, but it's a non-structural piece of O25, and there's just no need for it. It's what I would call overkill. So. Because this is non-structural, this is just a piece of skin, I'm just repairing a crack in a piece of skin, God only knows how that crack got there, then I would try to use my maximums for everything. Maximum edge distance, maximum pitch. As long as you can justify that, you're golden and you wanna end up with something really pretty like this. Now again, this piece, you're going to have to cut a piece out of the existing skin wherever the crack was. So if the crack was here, you're gonna have to cut this piece out and slowly but surely take your time and file it away until it fits in there nice and clean um, even on all edges and then put your doubler on the back side now you don't want your edge distance I would cut this off with these black lines right here you don't want your edge distance above 4d you want it at 4d so cut that off and you would be golden so there you go that was I know a lot of information um, but I hope that this would get you past the ONP. If you're doing anything like this in your aviation maintenance career, then as always, uh, defer to the manuals, defer to the people more experienced around you, um, gather all your information to make sure you're doing things the right way. Crucially, make sure you're doing things the right way. But this, this should get you past your ONP and get you a, 
uh, A&P certificate. This is one of those projects that people get, lay out and fabricate a flush patch. Uh, sometimes it's just lay out a patch. If you just have to lay out a patch, then you don't actually have to drill and shoot any of the rivets. Um, I did another video on shooting rivets. I'll probably link that one at the end of this one, but that is gonna do it all for this video. So if you enjoyed the content, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe. Uh, comment which, which practical project you would like me to like to see me do next. There is a whole playlist attached to this, so make sure you go through that playlist and it's not something I've already done. As always, go build something and be easy.